Parker became the leader of Canada's largest English-speaking diocese. But his life was not without controversy. Because on the condition that children can be properly raised with stable parents. And uh, when you cut that out and make, make pleasure the only concern of sex, you're going to degrade everybody, in particular, you're going to degrade women. During his 12-year tenor, he worked to improve race relations and secured educational rights for the Catholic community. Cardinal Carter was 91. Though the weather might suggest otherwise, summer is upon us, and that means the student job search is in full swing. Deanna Sumanak talked to Ryerson students and career advisors to find out the summer job forecast. Time is running out in this school year. April is here, and the exams are not the only things on students' minds. With one week of school left, finding a summer job is a priority for many students. We came here to the Ryerson Career Center to see what opportunities are out there. A Note Locke is an employment counselor at the Ryerson Career Center. Um, I just did a quick run through Workopolis campus this morning just to see, and I was pleased to see that there are some professional types of positions. There's, of course, all kinds of government programs as well um, that students might want to check out. The center, located on the fourth floor of Jorgensen Hall, has plenty of resources, but do the students know about them? Only about a third of the students on campus are aware that there's a career center that exists to help them not only with looking for work, but the whole career planning process. Eileen Lynn, a second year student, is the only one of her friends to use the center. I think they all know about the website already, they just don't know where this office is. The center is deserted on a Monday morning. That's because some students prefer a personal approach when looking for a job. But for this nursing student, that may not be possible. I don't know, I guess because of all the stars things going around, um, it's really hard to get into the hospitals and try to apply to find out job postings. And then, there's the old-fashioned way. So get those resumes in, and remember, it's paper clips, not staples. For JTV, this is Deanna Simonek. Ottawa hosted the 32nd annual Juno Award last night. Here is Elizabeth Ray Collett with entertainment. Thanks, Mint. While well, Avril and Shania clean up at the Junos, Colin Farrell did the same at the box office. Here's the highlights. Country queen Shania Twain opened the Junos with a bang yesterday, celebrating the Canadian music scene this past year. Ottawa's Choral Centre was packed with Canadian musicians and music fans, leaving Shania without a seat. I would take a seat, but I wouldn't dare sit on a swollen member, okay? Shania's wardrobe celebrated another Canadian favourite, hockey. She wore outfits supporting the Ottawa Senators, Montreal Canadiens, Vancouver Canucks, Calgary Flames, and the less than popular Leafs. Nevertheless, Shania's fans cheered as she accepted three awards. Canada on this new record has been the biggest supporter around the whole world. Thank you so much, Canadians. 18-year-old Avril Lavigne was an even bigger hit last night, performing for the cheering crowd and raking in four awards, including Best Single of the Year. This is just so incredible. This being my first album, that, you know, going this far, having this dream of mine, you know, come true. It's, it's pretty amazing. Hall of Fame inductee Tom Cochran also performed, singing a medley of his best songs. Lenny Kravitz has been in the studios lately, but it will be hard to buy his music anytime soon. Radio stations and record stores won't carry his new song, We Want Peace. The only place you can get Lenny's new song is by downloading it from the website rockthevote.org. And in movie theaters this weekend, Van Diesel's A Man Apart rushed into third place, teen comedy What a Girl Wants fell into second, and Phone Booth starring Colin Farrell was in first place, ringing up $15 million in ticket sales. How'd I get so lucky to be picked up by a killer with a rifle? You had it made. How'd we get so lucky to see you for 80 minutes straight, Colin? For entertainment news, I'm Elizabeth Ray Collett. Now back to the desk. 
Hamilton police officers have hit the jackpot, but not in solving a crime. Instead, the 13 officers will share the $25 million prize from Friday's Super 7 lottery. Staff sergeants may soon be looking to replace the entire unit. Well, the initial season is wrapping up and the rebels are winning down. Here is Donna Bosio with the weekend sport update. Thanks, man. Well, it was deja vu all over again. Overall, it was a rather predictable weekend in sports, but Shania helped spice things up and JTV Sports handed out a very special award. Yeah, Vince Carter hurt himself again last night in Jersey. With only 30 seconds left in the game and the Raptors down by nine, Carter went down with this nasty ankle sprain. He won't be coming back this season. And speaking of not coming back, Michael Jordan continued his farewell tour in Boston last night, where he scored 25 points, leading the Wizards to a 99-98 victory. With the NHL playoffs just around the corner, everyone's getting in the mood, including proverbial puck bunny Shania Twain, who showed fantastic team spirit at last night's Juno Awards with at least four hockey-inspired outfits. On the ice, the division title slipped through the Canucks' fingers with this goal by LA Kings forward Mike Eleranta. At the Brazilian Grand Prix, more gratuitous car crashes. Yay! Oh no, my $10 million car is on fire. And finally, winner of this year's JTV News Most Horrifying Sportscast Award, Mr. John Gallagher. Watch as he scares the little children. Ping! <laughs> Wipe that face off your head. <laughs> he really raises the bar for all of us. And that's it for today's sports update. I'm Dana Borcia, now back to the desk. It's the beginning of April, and instead of basking in the sun, Ryerson students are bundling up to deal with more snow and more cold. Monica Verma reports. For the beginning of April, temperatures are normally in the double digits. But today, it's minus 2 degrees Celsius. Even though the spring season has officially begun, the streets of Toronto are frigid and bleak. It may be a while before we can enjoy a bike ride in the park. So in the meantime, Torontonians will have to bundle up as they hurry from one warm building to the next. Despite the unexpected chill, students at Ryerson are coping with the cold. I'm from Jordan, from Middle East. Yeah. So I guess you're not used to this weather? Yes, but I start now uh, getting you know, uh, familiar with this environment here, especially the cold. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing now. But how do you feel about it being snowing in April? I don't know why everyone acts surprised for us. Like every year this happens. There's like a little bit of sunshine, and next thing you know, a whole bunch of snow comes, and everyone's disappointed. But probably go away in like a week or two. Not enjoying it at all. I doesn't look like April. It looks like freaking February. Compared to what it was like <laughs> earlier this winter. It's still okay. I mean, I can pretty much move around throughout the school without having to go outside. But whenever I do go outside, it makes me a little upset just because it's so cold. It's, it's hard to get around when you're freezing. <laughs> Normally, these benches would be filled with students sitting for exams, but today, students have opted for the warmth of the library. For JTV News, I'm Monica Verma. And that's our program for today. For all of us here at JTV News, thank you for watching.